Okay, so we're going to take a deeper dive here into. We're going to deep dive now. We're going to download this Excel spreadsheet. And we're going to see what we get here. So, this is the JFK assassination records 2017. And we're going to download the spreadsheet. And we're going to see what the spreadsheet has. It says it has the metadata about the documents. All right, so here we go. So this is the list. So here's there's a memo field over here. Okay, so it goes to A to Q. Uh, so let's look. So what we can do now is we can filter here. It's because the filter is turned on, I believe. Let's see, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna say we want uh, formally held in full. So we just want those documents. And this is to LBJ number of pages two. So this so this now contains a subset of everything that was only recently it was held formally held in full. This is to the president. Let's look at see what other names we have here. So, you, so we have all this. We can sort here by these names. Title. Here we have reaction of Soviet and communist party officials. Jagger Hoover document number such and so. So if I click on it, it looks like it will take me to the archive. So let's see what happens. Yep, it does. So the spreadsheet's kind of a master control. So this is going to be a lot more helpful to search, <coughs> excuse me, the archives. So this article we, we, we gleaned from uh, the Excel spreadsheet from the National Archives. <coughs> from Jagger Hoover to Marvin Watson. <clears throat> uh, for your information, I'm enclosing a communication which may be of interest to you. Upon removal of the enclosure, if classified, this transmittal form becomes unclassified. So here we have an interesting thing. So when when the so according to J. Edgar Hoover, when the Soviet Union discovered found out very quickly that President Kennedy was dead, as we see here, a source who has furnished reliable information in the past and who was in Russia on the date of the assassination of the late President John F. Kennedy advised on December 4, 1963 that the news of the assassination of President Kennedy was flashed to the Soviet people almost immediately after its occurrence. It was greeted by great shock and consternation and church bells were tolled in the memory of President Kennedy. So according to our source, officials of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union believe that there were some well-organized conspiracy on the part of the ultra-right term that we hear a lot now in 2017 in the United States effect a coup. They seem convinced that the assassination was not the deed of one man but that it was rose out of a carefully planned campaign in which several people played a part. They, the Soviet communists, felt that these ele those elements interested in utilizing assassination playing on anti-communist sentiments in the United States would then utilize this act to stop negotiations with the Soviet Union, attack Cuba, and thereafter spread the war. 
As a result of these feelings, the Soviet Union immediately went into a state of national alert. That sounds eerily similar to 2017. So it has an eerie, there's an eerie echo there in this paragraph. Our source further stated that Soviet officials were fearful that without leadership, some irresponsible general in the United States might launch a missile at the Soviet Union. It was further opinion of the Soviet officials that only maniacs would think that the left, that the quote-unquote left forces in the United States as represented by Communist Party USA would assassinate President Kennedy especially in the view of the abuse the Communist Party USA has taken from the ultra-left as a result of its support of the peaceful coexistence and disarmament policies of the Kennedy administration. Now this is interesting. So here we have a statement. The Soviet officials that only... It was further opinion of the Soviet officials that only maniacs would think that the quote-unquote left forces in the United States as represented by the Communist Party USA would assassinate President Kennedy, especially in the view of the abuse the Communist Party USA has taken from the ultra-left, it's interesting, from the ultra-left, as a result of its support of the peaceful coexistence and disarmament policies of the Kennedy administration. According to our source, the Soviet officials claim that Lee Harvey Oswald had no connection whatsoever with the Soviet Union. Now we know that from another document that Lee Harvey Oswald had met <coughs> with somebody in Mexico at the Soviet, Soviet uh, consulate. They described him as a neurotic maniac who was disloyal to his own country and everything else. They know that this Oswald never belonged to any organization, so you know was never given Soviet citizenship. So we have the Soviets re re uh, uh, putting it regret. Okay, so that's interesting. That's an interesting document. This is document number. As you see here, there's information. The document numbers up here, doc ID 32204484. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet's kind of our key here. So we let's uh, let's see what this is. Agency LBJ. So let's just look at all LBJ documents. Let's look at this one. It's going to take us. It's, it's, it's saying, hey, well, I'm going to open this at the archives. Let's open it up. So with that spreadsheet, you can navigate pretty quickly around. Net situation room file. OK, so this is situation room log. This is after the assassination. We have a date of 26, 27 December 63. Duty Officer R.G. Mays. Message put on wire to LBJ Ranch from Department of Defense to Sal Salinger. Quote, CIA has asked that a message be passed to Robert Hill, Mr. McCone's security agent. When plane from Seattle <coughs> arrives at Bergenstrom Air Force Base, contacted Bergenstrom, asked that they have Hill Call situation room and arrival. Message we qu message quote we received the packet package successfully related to Hill when he called at 0100 from the LBJ Ranch. So this is some kind of wire. Is that all there is? Just one page. Not much from Mr. LBJ. I'll say that much. One page. Let's go to this one here. Something about the case officer, Nosinko.
this is a Soviet officer wanting to defect. So why is it in the JFK files, I wonder? KGB officer Nasenko is regularly assigned to the counterintelligence directorate of the KGB in Moscow, was included in the Soviet delegation to the disarmament conference part of a cover arrangement, which permitted him to carry out intelligence and security fiction. So there's a pattern that's kind of emerging that I didn't know before, that it, and it's from these documents that um, that Kennedy was an anti uh, anti industrial military complex type person. We saw that in that previous document, so maybe there's truth to that. So the conspiracy, the conspiratorium, the conspiracy theories that, you know, hypothesis really that are out there is that there was a, a disagreement with Kennedy's approach towards the Soviets. There was the, you know, the, the missiles of October, the crisis, the Cuban Missile Crisis when the world was on edge and then the Soviet Union backed down. And then Kennedy was part of a plan to maybe, you know, start a, a unilateral disarmament program that began and it went through, uh, you know, through LBJ, uh, Nixon, slowly but surely, that was built back up in the 80s. So here we have a, someone who's leaving. I'm not sure why this is in the archive. I'm sure there's a good reason. So back to the spreadsheet. Let's select all. So we're, now these are formally withheld in full. We can go back up to the filter and we can put in part. I'm going to still look at the f in full right now. So I'm just looking here at the what we can get out of the metadata here. More and this Nosinko character is reappearing again. And he's interrogated. Again, it's part of the JFK file, so I'm not sure why he is so prominent, but he is in this document quite a bit. Sosa report. It rings a bell. Democratic Operation of the Revolutionary Front Month of September 1960, Mexico. Lincoln, Linian production. I'm just going through them as fast as I can. More, more Nasinko. This guy is appears a lot in here. The Nasinko records. See here, he appears quite a bit. So he it, obviously this is a person of note that we need to focus on. Or Helms, Jesse Helms. Unknown subject. Let's look at this one. We click on the spreadsheet, she'll open up. We can, it'll take us to the archive. postponed in full. So this is one of these documents. So we now unknown subject possibly identifiable with Eric Starvo Galt. Subjects Galt. Two pages. Okay. Memorandum for the record. Unknown subject possibly identifiable with Eric Starvo Galt. Proof of release date 5th of May 1978. So it was, it was to be released in 10 years. On, on the 19th of April 1968, I passed to Mr. Papik of the FBI 10 copies each of the two pho photographs contain copies attached of an unknown individual who bears some resemblance to Galt. <clears throat> I don't know if this is where the picture was. I don't know. ABC. The results of these searches see were essentially negative, although one photograph described only as slightly resembling Galt was turned over to the FBI. That Galt entered Mexico via Laredo, Texas on 7th October 1967. He was located in the Hotel Rio Puerto Vajada, Calisco. From here, he's. So, who is this Galt character? We have a lot of moving, we have so many moving parts. So let's just 
Google Eric Starvo Galt Ah, James Earl Ray. So that's James Earl Ray. James Earl Ray is the assassin of Dr. Martin Luther King. So what is he doing here? So when was this released? This. This is 1968. When was Dr. King assassinated? Dr. King assassination. He is assassinated April 4th, 1968 by James Earl Ray. So this is Dr. King is assassinated. by James Earl Ray who is he goes by Eric Starvo Galt and here he is so we have a person that was with him that's interesting so here we have James Earl Ray is in Mexico and he's he takes on an alias as Eric Starvo Galt and there was someone with him. See that's the thing with all this stuff, there was, there's so many moving parts. So James Earl Ray assassinated Dr. King. Dr. King was assassinated by James Earl Ray. Here he's wanted This wanted poster, and he is wanted. So here he is as Eric Starvo Galt. Here he is, as his name is Civil Rights Conspiracy, Interstate Flight Robbery, James Earl Ray. Criminal record has been convicted of burglary, robbery, forging U.S. postal money orders, armed robbery, and operating motor vehicle without owner's consent. Huh, so that that's interesting. So he is in the Kennedy archives. It's a, it's interesting. So he's 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 a r roaming around in Mexico also. Is there a connection? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's the, the deeper you get, you know, it's 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 just like a, a maelstrom of information. But James Earl Ray shot and killed. He was the assassin of Dr. King. He goes by Eric Starbo Galt. He's roaming around in Mexico, just like Lee Harvey Oswald was. Is there a connection? I, I don't know. I see why people get hooked on this. I, I don't want I don't want to get hooked on it, but I can see why people do get hooked on this. There's just so many different lines. There's a FOIA request over publications. FOIA request. That would be interesting. What you could do, by the way, if you saw something interesting, you just go here and highlight it. You know, I'm going to say that this is a, you know, this is a green. We'll just say green is, you know, you could highlight that line. And, and if it was like red, you're like, well, I really, I really need to see that document. And you could also mark in here which ones you've looked at. And so pick your pick your own methodology. You know, like red is like I have this is absolutely critical. You know, orange, yellow, you know, whatever, and down to green. That and then you may have like a certain color that hey, I've I've looked at it and I didn't have anything I wanted in it. So we'll keep going through here. So we're at the end of the in full and.
that number is inaccurate because we I've got the filter turned on just for in full. King Ray Foya. So Dr. King keeps appearing in here. The new left. Okay, let's open up that. Let me, let me I want to mark this that I've looked at it. I want to pick a color here. That means I've looked at it. This means it's may have some interest. Let me go to File, Save As here. And I'm going to put on my desktop. Just I, I don't know, this crazy long name. I'm just going to leave it as, I'm going to change that to National Archives. Okay. So let's go and see what this is all about, the new left. I'm not sure. I'm just it just kind of caught my eye. Uh, originator CIA, the new left, October 9th, 68. Subjects King. Now remember, Dr. King has been assassinated. Now he was assassinated April 4th, 1968. Interesting. The new left, subjects King. Now Dr. King is of course assassinated, postponed in full. Prepared for the subcommittee to investigate the administration of the Internal Security Act and others, Internal Security Laws Committee of the Judiciary. So this is hard to read. It was this kind of metamor metamorphosis which transformed the SNCC, I don't know what that is, and CORE from civil rights organizations into revolutionary forces calling not for the entrance of Negroes into society, but for the revolutionary reconstruction of society. It was this change which provided them with a common basis for union with other new left organizations, which also sought the revolutionary transformation of society, one in which integration, as they saw it, would become a possibility. Until then, everything about the status quo to be challenged, whether it was a selective service system, selective service system or the war. Perhaps a major fusion of the civil rights movement with the new left was found, however, in the person of the late Martin Luther King. The assassination of Dr. King in Memphis on April 4th of this year was an unspeakable tragedy and affront to every civilized man. There is an ancient saying that one should say nothing critical about the dead. But a discussion of the developing relations between the new left and civil rights movement is impossible without making note of the role played by Dr. King in the developments of the, in the closing years of his career. So this is, they're talking about Dr. King So, let's see, speaking New York, King called on all who find the American course in Vietnam, a I'm down here, a disarmable and unjust one, to apply as conscientious objectors to military service. He described the U.S. government as the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. National Guardian, April 5th, 1967, page 13. That, see, it, this thing has eerie echoes into our time period, doesn't it? Just it constantly eerie echoes. Um, speaking in New York on April 4th, this is from this pamphlet or book, The New Left. King, the, Dr. King called on, quote, called on, quote, all who find the American course of Vietnam a dishonorable and just one, end quote, to apply as conscientious objectors to military service. He described the U.S. government as the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. This paragraph here, a challenge came from Whitey Young, executive director of the Urban League. He said that since Negroes, quote, have as their first priority the immediate problem of survival in this country, the limited resources and pers personnel available to civil rights agencies for work on their behalf should not be diverted into other channels. Interesting. Inter this is kind of really fascinating now. So we're seeing a, a direct 
we're seeing in this document that now this is of course the perspective of this the, the author of this document that Dr. King is a leftist I don't know if that's a true statement or not and that he's against the Vietnam War <clears throat> On April 24, 1967, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Dr. King, Martin Luther King of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference announced a, quote, Vietnam summer drive, quote, end quote, against the war, against U.S. interventions elsewhere. Sounds, you know, that sounds eerie, eerily, it, it has an eerie echo, just an eerie echo. So that's really fascinating. So I would I would flag that there as a kind of an important document. I want to change that to red. That's an important document. <clears throat> that needs to be read in depth, the new left. Here's more about Dr. King. Americans attending the World Peace Conference. Again, another, this pattern here. Peace Conference, Kennedy, disarmament, Dr. King against the Vietnam War. Nocinco, he comes up. Illegible. Let's see what illegible is, just out of curiosity. Yeah, it's pretty illegible. Interesting. So those illegibles are like that. Back to the spreadsheet. Collins Radio, loose documents. Garcia and Paula report. I don't know. Anyway, on and on it goes. I mean, it's pretty deep. But basically, download the spreadsheet from the National Archives. Uh, if you turn on your filters then you can filter through the spreadsheet fast these are hyperlinked in the spreadsheet so you can get to anywhere you want I'll keep going through them let's look at this last one here we're gonna we're gonna tag it that we went through it Activities, Oswald Lee, post-Russian period, political and subversive. Ohio. Something about an accountant here. I don't know if this is the mob. I, I I don't know. I don't know what this is. This one's fascinating. This the new left about Dr. King. That one really needs to be looked at in depth, in my opinion. Okay, well I could I could go on forever, but uh, this is fascinating. It's a fascinating look um, to look at this data. So I hope this has been a help. I'll try to go through some more of this, and we'll see what we find. This has been Bob Brown, and uh, as always, keep studying.